Darling, for which Julie Christie won an Academy Award, has dated since 1965, when swinging London was reaching its peak. But the film is still a feral bite at the affluent society and the luxuries of boredom. Frederick Raphael's screenplay bristles with satiric barbs, showing how Julie Christie's Diana Scott reacts at first shyly and vulnerably, and then almost viciously, to the warmth and kindness of her mentor, Dirk Bogard's Robert. She finds her mirror image in Lawrence Harvey's Miles, a suave executive whose organisation dubs Diana the Happiness Girl, and whose rapacity is much more sophisticated than hers. Schlesinger's in perfect control of the film, giving it a jauntiness that fights against the slow souring of the tale, and introducing occasional unobtrusive devices to denote the passage of time. As always, he's interested in people's faces, their grimaces, the fixed grin in photos, the anguish or relief caught in close-ups on a pillow. Schlesinger also takes advantage, as he does in Midnight Cowboy, of the film-within-a-film film technique. There's Diana's short-lived appearance in a horror epic, and in more subtle vein, the newsreel covering her marriage to an Italian prince. We always had Julie Christie in mind for the, for the leading part, but of course she was an unknown quantity then, and there was a good deal of resistance, and I remember going over to the States firstly to work with Julie, who was with the Royal Shakespeare Company on tour with a, a, a production. And in Philadelphia, we worked together in a hotel room um, while she was on tour for a couple of days, reading through the part and talking about it. And she was very perturbed because she felt it wasn't like her. I said, well, you're an actress, for God's sake, and, and surely you, know, you can understand where she's coming from, this character. I think that our attitude to Darling was a good deal more cynical than merely a sort of optimistic look at swinging London. Um, I mean, the origins of Darling were, came from a conversation with Godfrey Wynne, the journalist, who was playing himself in Billy Lyre, and at the beginning of the of the film, in the credit sequence, and. He said, do you ever read newspapers and base films on, on stories, real-life stories, and, and drew our attention to a, an extremely cynical arrangement that was publicized after someone's suicide in, in the newspapers, I forget which, in which there was a story of a girl who was being kept by a syndicate of people, both show business, banking, etc., who had access to this girl, who they'd all contribute to, to the uh, upkeep of in a flat uh, in, in Mayfair, who had realized, I think, her predicament and thrown herself out of the window and committed suicide. So this was the, the origins. I often think, looking back, that that should have been the story we should have done. Um, Freddie Raphael came in because we'd read some stuff of his and we'd talked about doing things with him before and we decided mainly because I think he absolutely had absolutely no regard for Godfrey Wynne at all and therefore said let's go our own particular way and we had decided that we wanted the film to be anyway about a girl who could not make up her mind uh, about commitment of any kind, that always felt there was going to be something around the next corner which would be better, which was a syndrome of the time as well, as it is of now. 